You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. Do you need a car? Been shopping only to be turned down because of bad credit, low credit, no credit, bankruptcy, or divorce? Guess what? Today's your lucky day. Because now you can buy a car, truck, or SUV, just about any vehicle. It's true. Bad credit doesn't matter. No credit doesn't matter. Bankruptcy or divorce, it just doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, your job is your ticket to your new vehicle. We're Auto Credit Express, and we've helped thousands of people just like you. Antonio H. told us, great company, got me connected, and the day I went in, I drove off in the car I wanted. 100% worth your time. Need a car? Get started now and drive off as early as today. Just text FINANCE, F-I-N-A-N-C-E, to 357 right now to get started. That's FINANCE, F-I-N-A-N-C-E, to 357 Auto financing the easy way. Text FINANCE to 357 KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. At St. Jude, a family never sees a bill at all. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. 
It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. It's time now for the conservative curmudgeon radio show. Now, here's Grouchy. everybody welcome in it is so good to be back with you again it is wednesday night and you are on klrn radio with me the opening act the grouch and we're happy to be here as you heard ah look programming reminder uh, wednesday night is now your freaking grand slam of conservative talk radio that's right we're back to a grand slam we were a triple play but now it is a grand slam once again. Kicked off right here with yours truly, followed by Fubar, then Robinson and Wright, and then America off the rails. You can't miss. Wednesday TV sucks, so do yourself a favor and stay right here with us all night. Get your knowledge on, have a drink at the Fubar, and uh, you know, you got to be careful because. Robinson and Wright, they, those crazy guys are always talking about guns and stuff like that. So, you know, you, <laughs> you got to be careful with the drinking and then the guns. But And then, you know, have your nightcap with America off the rails and, and let Rick lay some knowledge on you. But uh, whatever you do, just make sure you're here with us because this is the place to be. Now, all that said, if you've listened for any amount of time, you know – that when it comes to my show, usually we're pretty much all business. Now, we've, we've had some fun shows. Don't get me wrong. We, the holiday tradition shows are a blast, and we're going to do those again later in the year. Don't worry. We're still going to do that. Um, but we're going to do something different tonight just because I get tired of listening to the same old crap in the news over and over and over and over. And I get tired of trying to break it down in different ways for you. So we're going to do some news in a little while. We are. We're going we're gonna to get to some hard news. But right now, we're going to do some weird shit. <laughs> Just oddball stories that have caught my attention in the last week that I think are neat enough to bring to you. So, where are we going to start? We're going to start with the one that really tipped me in this direction to begin with. Uh, the biggest mystery in 130 years, Jack the Ripper, the man who stalked London more than 130 years ago, was apparently a demon barber with a taste for human flesh, according to new scientific evidence. Now, what evidence you say now, you know, I only saw one other person uh, put this story out there for people to read on Twitter. So uh, I follow almost all 13,200 plus of you that follow me. So I think I'd have seen it because it's something that interests me if more than one person had pushed it. So anyway, here we go. The evidence is a blood covered shawl found at one of the murder scenes, and it was believed to contain DNA from both the butchered victim, Catherine Eddowes, 
and the world's most infamous serial killer, Jack the Ripper. The Ripper murders took place in the East End of London in the 1880s. Now, researchers at Liverpool John Moores University conducted genetic tests on the sample long thought to have belonged to the Ripper himself, who they now believe to be a Polish man named Aaron Kosminski. Uh, they describe, for the first time, systematic molecular level analysis of the only surviving physical evidence linked to the Jack the Ripper murders. This is written in the Journal of Forensic Sciences. This is like legit. Finding both matching profiles in the same piece of evidence enhances the statistical probability of its overall identification and reinforces the claim that the shawl is authentic. The bloody shawl is linked to the double murder of victims three and four, Elizabeth Stride and then Eddowes, on the night of September 30th, 1888, in Whitechapel. Stride's throat had been cut, but the rest of her body was mostly intact, unlike most of the infamous killer's victims. Uh, it's long been thought that uh, what the Ripper meant or meant to do was uh, to have killed anywhere between five and 18 women. Uh, he had been interrupted in his work and was still on the hunt for more unfortunate victims. And, and that's probably why he just killed Stride like he did, just to get rid of her. She wasn't the right profile for him. She was simply a hurdle. So uh, an hour after Stride was murdered, uh, he butchered Eddowes, tearing her apart and taking her kidney as a trophy before sending the sickening from hell letter in which he claimed he had eaten it. Now, five women, Marianne Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly, are widely held to have been victims of the Ripper, although later murders were attributed to him. All were murdered in the most brutal fashion imaginable around the Whitechapel area. Their bodies were utterly mutilated, many of them being disemboweled. Chapman's uterus was taken. Eddowes had her uterus and a kidney removed and her face mutilated. And Kelly's body was completely destroyed and her face hacked away. Such was the fear at the time that the streets of London emptied after nightfall leaving the once bustling Victorian capital deathly silent while the Ripper roamed the streets. Now, this astonishing new article featured in the Journal of Forensic Sciences, fresh genetic evidence now points to a 23-year-old Kosminski. And this was confirmed after comparing fragments of mitochondrial DNA taken from the shawl with those taken from Kosminski's known living descendants. Investigators identified Kosminski as their prime suspect in the killings in 1888. However, they did not have enough proof to solve the case against him at the time. Now, he may have been identified as their prime suspect, but there were actually seven men that were detained at different times for questioning in relation to the murders. The DNA testing suggests that the Ripper had brown eyes and brown hair. This matches evidence from eyewitness reports. And the researchers say their new study provides the most systematic and most advanced genetic analysis to date regarding the Ripper murders. And it's not the first time DNA evidence has pointed to Kosminski as the killer. Uh, Jari Lelanin uh, a biochemist at LJMU and one of the co-authors of the current study first conducted testing on the suspect's DNA years earlier and came to the same conclusion. What they did this time was they went deeper and they used the descendant's DNA to backtrace, which makes it even more airtight that it matched this time. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I really believe... I believe that science has finally solved the Jack the Ripper case. Um, whether we'll actually get an official confirmation.
knows, but this story was just weird enough to trip me in the direction of going after some other weird stories. And if you're anything like me, the Ripper story has always fascinated me. Uh, and I hope it's fascinated you. Because, um, this, to me, is, is such good stuff. It really is. But uh, as with anything else, we have to turn to the next page. And another weird story, maybe not so much weird as ironic, but we'll call it both. In Indiana, a cow that had escaped from its transport trailer was caught on video running to a Chick-fil-A restaurant. That's right, a Chick-fil-A restaurant. Now, I don't know if there was an open casting call at the Chick-fil-A. I don't know if there was somebody there with a gigantic casting couch. Uh, you know, I really don't know what was going on, but the cow ended up at Chick-fil-A. Uh, there's no word on whether he actually held a sign that said, eat more chicken. But uh, the Noblesville Police Department said the cow was reported running loose in the city Saturday night on the east side of town, and the bovine led police on a lengthy chase. And the cow, which had escaped from its transport trailer, was caught on video by surprise witnesses as it ran through busy roads while dodging police pursuit. The animal was safely captured after being filmed running to the parking lot of a nearby Chick-fil-A where police were said to have later gotten coffee <laughs> after the cow was loaded back into his trailer. Man, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's just like life imitating art. <laughs> that's so good. I, uh, you know, you gotta love it. I mean, if I were Chick-fil-A, I would pay for the video and use it. I mean, you know, that's got to be a gold mine waiting to happen right there in advertising. I just think that there's so much they could do with that. But as strange as that was, it wasn't as strange as the, uh, well, I don't know if we want to call him a cannibal. How about cannibal-like? A cannibal-like would-be bar patron. Yeah. Yeah. So police in New York are searching for a man that they say bit off a bar bouncer's finger last month because the bar he wanted to go into was closing. The unidentified male was at El California Sport Sports Bar in the Jackson Heights neighborhood of Queens, uh, someplace I'm familiar with because my mother's family is from Queens, uh, around 4 a.m. Uh, back on February 16th. Uh, we're just now hearing about this. I wonder why. So investigators say that the guy wanted to go into the bar, but the bouncer wouldn't let him in and said that the bar was closing for the night. Officials say that's when he bit the guard's pinky, which doctors were reportedly able to reattach. He bit the dude's pinky finger off and spit it out, and they had to reattach it. Are you freaking kidding me? Rick, you ever been that hungry? <laughs> uh, no, I can honestly say no. <laughs> Oh, God, what the hell is this country coming to? Uh, the suspect is described as a white or Hispanic man with dark hair and goatee. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Good thing I wasn't in New York, huh? How do we know you weren't in New York? You got any proof? Um, I might have an alibi. I might. If, anybody, if anything comes of it, I, I think I could come up with something. I'm not sure I believe you. Oh, I'm not uh, sure you should, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm. okay, wait a second. They're saying he was about five foot nine. That crosses me off the list. 
Yep. I've met you. I can attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a good bit taller than 5'9". Ah, I'm not. That's right about where I'm at, but I'm also not dark haired, so I'm good. Yeah, yes, as I can attest, see, we have each other's alibi now. That's the way it should be. So anyway, uh, photos released by the New York Police Department showed a man matching the description wearing black boots and a black jacket with Japanese graphics on it. Okay, you can cross me off that list for sure because I would not be wearing something that cheesy. Um, sorry, just not going to happen. Anyway, so they're still looking for this dude, apparently. Um, you know, now now over a month later, um, he, if he's smart, he burned that damn jacket because that just sounds hideous. <laughs> you can get away with black boots, but that jacket will give you away in a heartbeat. Oh, God. What else is going on in this weird country of ours? Hey, you know, it may be weird, but you got to love it. It's ours, and it's still the greatest place to be, despite all the lunacy that these uh, Democratic presidential candidates are proposing, which we'll get into a little later. That's its own weirdness. So uh, what else is weird? Well, here's a weird one. NASA is warning of space herpes. That's right. You heard it here first. Space herpes, the stress of the body or stress on the body of space flight is believed to contribute to suppressing the immune system and helping the virus to grow. NASA has issued a warning about space herpes after a study found the virus was reactivating in crew aboard the space shuttle and international space station missions. According to the agency, while only a small portion of the astronauts develop symptoms as a result of the dormant virus awakening, it could spell danger for longer space flight missions, for instance, like to Mars. Get your ass to Mars. Get your ass to Mars. Yeah. Uh, NASA astronauts endure weeks or even months exposed to microgravity and cosmic radiation, not to mention the extreme G-force Oh, yeah, you know the G-force, that's right, of takeoff and re-entry. <laughs> There's no double entendre there. Uh, the physical challenge is compounded by more familiar stressors like social separation, confinement, and an altered sleep-wake cycle. Uh, this is according to uh, Dr. Satish Mehta, the senior author of the paper, and academic at the Johnson Space Center. Wow. G-forces for takeoff and re-entry at the Johnson Space Center. <laughs> I, You know, I only report it, folks. I don't get to name it all. <laughs> so the research is published in the journal Frontiers in Microbiology, and concerns the reactivation of this virus rather than a new virus which had developed in space. Uh, NASA's thorough medical systems measure the physiological impact of spaceflight by analyzing astronauts' saliva, blood, and urine throughout the spaceflight. Now, during spaceflight, there is a rise in secretion of stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline which are known to suppress the immune system. So I wonder if they also take into account how cortisol adds, um, um, you know, the, the body's ability to retain fat. I wonder if that factors into their, uh, their clothing choices while in space, because especially for prolonged uh, flights, I would think that your body would actually expand a little bit with the addition of fat from excess cortisol and that uh, you're a little, I guess you would need little stretchy space pants or something, you know, to, uh, to stay in clothes. I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm just doing this. I don't, I don't know. But um, due to this suppression of the immune system, 
the astronauts' bodies are less able to keep dormant viruses down, allowing them to reactivate. Uh, to date, 47 out of 89 astronauts on short space shuttle flights and 14 out of 23 on longer International Space Station missions shed herpes viruses in their, or showed herpes viruses in their saliva or urine samples. That's a lot. That's more than just a small percentage like they were hinting at earlier. Um, that's, that's an alarming number. That's more than half in both instances. Uh, these frequencies, as well as the quantity of viral shedding, are marked, markedly higher than in some samples from before or after flight or from matched healthy controls. Uh, only six astronauts developed any new mm -hmm. symptoms due to viral reactivation. Okay, that's, maybe that's what they were talking about is reactivation. Uh, and all those symptoms were minor, according to the physicians. Uh, there are eight known herpes viruses, including the strain for chickenpox, uh, which once contracted will stay within the host's nerve cells for their entire life. Uh, this is where your shingles comes from, folks. If you've had them, you know it ain't nothing to play with. I've been lucky. I have not had shingles. I, knock wood, but, um, you know, whatever. It, it's nothing to play with. And like they said, it's with you for life once you get it. Uh, these are mostly kept suppressed by the immune system. But if the immune system itself is suppressed by space exploration, then these viruses could pose significant risks to astronauts traveling to Mars or even beyond. Uh, the research found that the longer the spaceflight mission, the more it seemed the viruses were reactivating. That just makes sense. I mean, come on. Your, your immune system is going to be repressed longer. That's going to give viruses a better chance to grow and strengthen and spread. And that's, you know, that's what they do. That's exactly what they do. If you've ever watched any kind of movie like, I don't know, Outbreak, uh, you know, you, you get the idea of how viruses change, they adapt, they spread, they grow. It's an ugly business. And, and, you know, I mean, literally you could, it would be difficult, I would think, but you could literally lose an entire crew on a mission long enough to get to Mars. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. Space herpes, man. It's weird. It's weird. How many of you had heard of space herpes before today? Huh? Yeah. Show of hands? I'm kidding. <laughs> wow. You guys really fell for that, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I can see you on your end. I see your little cameras activated. Yeah, you can't see me, but I see you. Anyway. Uh, all right, folks. Uh, we're, we're hitting the bottom of the hour. Uh, we're going to take a little commercial break here. We're going to bounce back after that, and then we're going to go back into uh, some normal-ish kind of news and see if we can't limp our way through the second half of the show. Do yourself a favor. It's time to go get your drink refilled, but get your butt back in your seat and be ready in about, what, three or four minutes, Rick? Something like that? Uh, counting bumpers about four. Yeah, counting bumpers about four minutes. So, all right, ready, set. I'm kidding. Go! Desert Storm. But even then, he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. 
It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. All right, welcome back. I'm glad you're back with me. Uh, we got one more weird, weird thing that we kind of have to do tonight before we move on to the regular kind of news stuff. And uh, Rick's starting to cue it up now, but um, if you know, I, I can't do this complete justice on its own. But um, what I need you guys to do is. Um, to make justifications for parasitism. Well, That's true. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Friends, hang on, on, I'll get it. You told me to go okay. ahead and cue it, so it started you faster than I expected it to. Hang on. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, just, just go ahead and hold it up. And uh, uh, I need everybody to um, take a trip out to Jason Howerton's timeline on Twitter. That's at Jason underscore Howerton, H-O-W-E-R-T-O-N. And... Um, you know, uh, Jason is with uh, the Blaze, um, so he has a couple of a uh, couple of crazy women on his timeline, uh, and we're going to do the audio side of it, and I'm going to give you some of the descriptor of the video side. But you, you've got to go out. There's at least two of these that I saw today. There may be even more by now. But um, Rick's going to cue up the audio, and and then we're going to talk about it for a minute. So go ahead, Rick. Roll it. Give me just a sec. i got to refresh it now. Okay. Got to refresh it. I don't need refreshing. I am fresh. I guarantee you. You can squeeze me to find out. It is an extreme biohazard 
to make justifications for parasitism. That's true. It isn't okay. Friends, we have enough humans on the planet. We don't need any more humans. It is not okay <laughs> for women to have babies and stop What the hell are you making me listen to? <laughs> under the pretense that they're doing a good thing by staying home and raising children. We don't need children. If you find yourself pregnant, no, there you are don't options, need children. Have you looked at a mirror? And you can have an abortion. No babies. Cut off the baby factories. We have 7.5 billion with a B humans on the planet. That's too much. The actual ideal amount seems to be under 1 billion. That's under true. 1 billion. We have 7.5 billion. No babies. Women who have babies and stay home to raise them should not be viewed as doing a good thing. That's not a good thing. It's completely not what the situation calls for at all. I'm sorry. Find another way to contribute and be valued. That's not a good way. I'm sorry. Is the chick next to her well, on an please, acid trip for or something? sakes, don't go into <laughs> Western medicine. That is... That has become the religion of the 21st century, That's Western true. medicine has. And those people in white coats hold themselves up as priests. They're, they're saying that they know what's true. And often what they say is absolutely crazy until we start to you follow the money, <laughs> do a little bit of forensic accounting and discover that, oh, they have a financial interest in that Alzheimer's care facility. That's why they're recommending that patient be removed from her familiar surroundings and be put into a care facility because he has an ownership interest in it. That's true. And so on. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's, it's like an uber-liberal diamond and silk show. <laughs> What the? What, I, I, we haven't played the disclaimer, but what are you making me listen to? Oh my listen, God. I mean, let's let's back up and start. Um, let's start with the uh, we don't need any more children, okay? Um, what's going to happen when the Earth population dies out because no one's having babies anymore? You stupid bitch! <laughs> I mean, what the hell, really? And and while she's rambling on like this. And, and Rick, now you you tell me if I'm being a little ungenerous here because I'm trying to be honest with this. I would say that the one that was talking looks to be probably in her upper 50s to early 60s. Yeah, I was going to say late 60s, early 70s, but we'll go with that. Okay. So, I mean, and, and then the young girl looks to be uh, in her early to mid 20s. Now, while the older one is sitting talking with some silly looking hand gestures, the young one, I, you know, I don't even know how to describe what she's doing other than maybe like slow motion lasso movements with her arm alternating with trying to churn a pound of armpit butter. Uh, <laughs> It just and they're sitting in a couple of Adirondack chairs out in the middle of the woods, you know, just I'm sure it's a backyard or something like that, but they've they've got it looking like they're in like the edge of a jungle setting. But it's just absolutely ludicrous. No more birthing children, you women out there. Damn you for having children. And and what she's saying is actually straight out of the United Nations Agenda 21, talking about one billion or less population on the Earth. Um, but, you know, again, if we were to enact that, who gets to decide who lives and who dies? You're talking about eliminating six and a half billion people from the face of the earth who picks okay so we got that problem um and yeah because uh you know let's let's advance a little more um with the talk about the doctors um you think every doctor out there has an ownership stake in long-term care facilities? You really think that? 
That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I would be willing to bet that the population of physicians that have ownership stakes in long-term care facilities that recommend patients to those facilities is under 10%. So the rest of them are just doing their friends solids, trying to pad everybody else's bank account, but theirs? Come on. How stupid can you be? Well, let's not even try to answer that. Uh, <laughs> again, you need to go out to at Jason underscore Howerton, H-O-W-E-R-T-O-N on Twitter, and, uh, and just check this out because this, folks, it is comedy gold. And like I said, there's at least one more video in the series. There might be more than that by now, um, but he had both. Both of those posted up earlier today. I could not pass on bringing this to you. There was no way in hell. So, <laughs> if you really want to have a good laugh, in the second video, the older lady is quiet and the younger one does all the talking and the older lady chimes in with the, that's right, every now and then, kind of like diamond and silk. You know, one does all the talking, the other one does the agreeing. Um, so <laughs> it's just... <laughs> you heard Rick's reaction. That was his first time listening to it. So, <laughs> and that was actually one of the reasons why I did that because I wanted to give you my honest reactions without hearing it before. That was insanity, I'm dude. Did. I am glad you did because it is special. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, look, folks that that is it for the weird news side of stuff. Um, so do me a favor, hit me up on Twitter. Let me know if you like weird news. We can do some more of this in the future if you like it. If you don't, we can go back to doing the hard news and doing numbers and budget stuff and all that good stuff. But I, I kind of like throwing something in the mix every now and then and, and doing something different. So, you know, just let me know what you think. I'm going to give you my honest take on it. I think doing that about once a month would be a cool change up. I think so too. I think it's a great way to just let loose and have a little more fun than normal. And I like fun. Uh, speaking of fun, you know, um, I know it's not the opportune time to do a plug right here in the middle of a segment, but um, next week in this time slot on KLRN radio, it is once again time for toxic masculinity. So you are definitely not gonna want to miss this show uh we're gonna be crowning a new babe of the month i don't know if i can officially drop that name just yet but um it's a name you're going to be familiar with uh so as soon as we have everything solid up we'll make that announcement and we'll start dropping some advertisements but uh trust me this one's going to be special you're going to want to watch or, or tune in you're going to want to tune in for sure um so anyway that's next week in this time slot. Uh, all right. So moving on to the serious side of the house, um, the United States Supreme court agreed to consider Virginia's plea to reinstate the life without parole sentence of a man who as a teenager participated in the sniper shootings that terrorized the DC region in 2002. The justices said they will take up, the state's appeal in the case of Lee Boyd Malvo, who was 17 when he and John Allen Muhammad fatally shot 10 people in Maryland, Virginia, uh, or Maryland, Virginia, and Washington, excuse me. Malvo was sentenced to life without parole uh, terms in Virginia and in Maryland. Muhammad was sentenced to death and was executed in 2009. See, why are we keeping people alive for 30 years? This guy was sentenced, appealed, and executed within seven years. I mean, this, we have literally got to shorten the death row time that these people get. Uh, you know, ah, we've talked about this before. Don't get me started. But... um. Malvo was sentenced to four life terms for crimes he committed in Virginia, but the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit ruled last year that while Malvo's life without parole sentences were legal when they were imposed, 
Supreme Court decisions that followed altered sentencing requirements for juvenile offenders. The appeals court judges said in a resentencing would determine whether Malvo qualifies as one of the rare juvenile offenders who can be sentenced to life without the possibility of parole because his crimes reflect permanent incorrigibility. They said if his crimes instead reflect the transient immaturity of youth, he is entitled to a sentence short of life without parole. The Supreme Court will review that decision. Uh, as is typical, the justices did not make any comment in agreeing to hear the case, uh, which will likely be heard in the fall. Regardless of what the Supreme Court decides, Malvo isn't getting out of prison anytime soon. He isn't currently getting a new sentence, or he isn't, yeah, he's not currently getting a new sentencing hearing in Maryland, where he struck a plea deal and was sentenced to six life without parole prison terms for shootings that took place in that state. A judge previously ruled that Malvo would not get new sentencing hearings in Maryland, and Malvo has appealed this. Malvo has been serving his sentences at Red Onion State Prison in Pound, Virginia. Not a pleasant place, folks. I've been by Pound, Virginia. Uh, Malvo and his mentor, Muhammad, who was 41, shot people during a three-week period as uh, they pumped gas, loaded packages into their cars, and went about their everyday business. Uh, Virginia's appeal was among four criminal cases the court added to its docket for the term that begins in October. Uh, in the others, Kansas, backed by the Trump administration and 10 other states, wants to be able to prosecute immigrants for identity theft and other crimes when they use people's social security numbers to work in the United States. Why is this even a thing? They're already breaking the law. This is called fraud. Uh, Kansas's top court ruled that the state couldn't prosecute the immigrants because the case relied on information that is on a required federal work authorization form, uh, the I-9, information that immigration law says may only be used for enforcement of federal crimes. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Interesting. Uh, the justices will decide whether convictions by non-unanimous juries in criminal cases violate the Constitution. Louisiana and Oregon are the only states that allow divided juries on some criminal charges, although Louisiana voters recently amended the state constitution to prohibit non-unanimous verdicts for crimes committed after January 1st. The court has held that the Sixth Amendment requires unanimous verdicts in federal criminal cases. But unlike with most rights guaranteed by the first 10 amendments, states have been are not been compelled to follow suit and require unanimous juries in all state cases. Uh, a Kansas death row inmate is challenging whether states can eliminate the so-called insanity defense for criminal defendants without violating the Constitution. The inmate has been sentenced to death for killing his estranged wife their two daughters, and the wife's grandmother. But the jury was not allowed to consider evidence that he was criminally insane at the time of the killings. Sounds like the Supreme Court's got a nice little docket coming in the fall. So, uh, what else is going on? Oh, yeah, here's a good one. You want to talk about the wall a little bit? Yeah, I knew you did. So, acting Pentagon chief, Patrick Shanahan said on Monday that he had provided Congress with a list of projects from the military construction budget that could be cut back in order to help pay for a wall on the border with Mexico. Last, uh, last month, President Trump declared a national emergency in a bid to fund his promised wall at the U.S.-Mexico border without congressional approval. The emergency declaration, whether you agree with it or don't agree with it, allows the Trump administration to use money from the military construction budget if needed. Trump issued the first veto of his presidency on Friday to block a measure passed by Democrats and Republicans in Congress that would terminate his emergency declaration for a wall 
on the U.S. border with Mexico to stem illegal immigration and crime. Uh, speaking before the start of his meeting with his French counterpart, Shanahan was asked if he had sent the list uh, of projects to Congress. Uh, Shanahan replied, I have. The more than 20-page document seen by Reuters included all the projects that were not awarded funding as of December 31st, 2018. The list includes a cemetery at the U.S. Military Academy in New York and a command uh, and control facility at Camp Tango in South Korea. Uh, it is essential uh, up to Congress to go through the list and figure out which projects would not be affected, including military housing, barracks, and projects that have already been awarded funding. Uh, the list is unlikely to satisfy Congress. The list is wholly insufficient and just tells Congress what projects it already approved, said Evan Hollander, a spokesman for Representative Nita Lowy, a Democrat and chairwoman of the House Appropriations Committee. This appears to be nothing more than another stall tactic designed to delay the political consequences of President Trump's emergency declaration. Uh, in a statement, the Pentagon said the pool of projects included uh, was valued at about $12.9 billion. The Pentagon has said it could use about $3.6 billion from the military construction budget this year if needed. This issue was highlighted during a tense congressional hearing on Thursday when Democratic senators demanded that they be provided a list of uh, military projects that could be impacted if funding was used to build the wall. Uh, we know President Trump wants to take money from our national security accounts to pay for his wall, and now we have a list of some of the projects and needed base repairs that could be derailed or put on the chopping block as a result, said Senator Jack Reed. Now, let me tell you something. The Democrats don't give a damn about military uh, bases being, you know, uh, renovated, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. They don't give a damn. This is all about stopping the wall from being built. Now, the upside, they don't have the votes to override Trump's veto. So what's going to happen is Trump's going to get to spend this money. Uh, even if the Democrats uh, are able to somehow unseat Trump in 2020 or take control of the Senate, which I don't see happening, um, the thing is, is this money is going to be spent on the wall and the wall is going to be built and we're going to have a wall. It, it looks like Trump's fi finally found a way to win, you know, what he needs. And what he needs is to get the wall built. Um, again, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the emergency declaration, but if we can have an emergency, a national emergency declared for Zika, the Zika virus carried by mosquitoes that killed two people, surely we can have a national emergency about illegal immigration which has killed a lot more than two people. I mean, you know, just an opinion, but it is what it is. And it, the reason they're so vehemently against this is because it's Trump. They all voted for a wall before. They just don't want to do it now because that's what Trump wants. Now I don't care. Um, one way or the other, if, if your conviction is to have a wall or not have a wall, okay, argue it on your convictions. Don't try to make it about something it's not, okay? It's not an abomination. It is not about stopping immigration. It's about stopping illegal immigration. This is a distinction that the Democrats refuse to draw a line on. They want to tell you that he's an anti-immigrant person. He's not. He's anti-illegal immigration. The Democrats like to say, people can't be illegal. No, but they can commit illegal acts. And violating our sovereignty as a nation is an illegal act. So anyway, that's where we're at. 
And as we roll back around towards the top of the hour, it's my job to remind you that FUBAR is coming up next, followed by Robinson and Wright, and then America off the rails. It is your Wednesday night Grand Slam of conservative talk on KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason do still reign most of the time. (laughs) At least the liberty does. The reason, you know, (laughs) hey, hey, hey. (laughs) <laughs> You'll have to wait for Rick's show tonight later for, for a real reason. But uh, anyway, uh, look, it's my job to tell you. If you like the show, tell your friends. If your friends like the show, you're going to need some new ones. But they and you are welcome right here with me every week on KLRN Radio for the Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show. I'm your host, The Grouch. Peace. God bless. I've been jumping through some hoops Wanna get my body loose Wanna tell you, tell you what to do I've been running I hate to play Nothing works here Medications don't work I did here for seven years Can't you hear me? 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 Can't you hear me